Mountain bike wheels take so much abuse, getting smashed through rocks and roots, bent sideways through corners and compressions. And when they go wrong, they can take you out. Mm, yes, that is completely correct, Neil. Yeah, in all kinds of conditions as well, from bogging wet, muddy trails in the winter to these dry, dusty ones that we've got today. So here are our five signs that you may need to fix or replace your wheels. A really common issue is broken spokes, although I haven't done that in a while myself, personally. But replacing the spoke is easy enough, although it's a bit of a pain, to be fair, because you've got to take the wheel out, take your tire off, rim tape and all that, and replace that as well. But that's okay, that's doable, and then you need to make sure your wheel is back in true, so getting the tension right. But if you're breaking spokes all the time, or the real nightmare here is when the nipples start to break, so old alloy nipples become really brittle. And sometimes even if you go and try and true the wheels, try and straighten up, and you put your spoke key on there and it rounds off the nipple, you probably find that all of them are like that. That is a nightmare. And rather, you know, it's really almost impossible to go around and replace all those because they'll all just crack away. So that's when I'll start thinking about, is it time to actually buy new wheels? So definitely replacing spokes and nipples individually, easy enough. If they're all going brittle, I'll start looking at the price for a new set of wheels. A dinged aluminium wheel or a cracked carbon wheel could well be spelling out the end of your ride, unfortunately. Now, if you are running aluminium wheels and you do ding them, so you do bend the edge of that rim over, well, the, then the air is very likely to seep out of that point because the tire is not going to seat and seal nicely against it. This can be fixed by bending very carefully an aluminium rim back into shape. So straightening it back up so that the tire pushes nice and firmly against the bead again. If you are running carbon wheels and you crack them, well, then that's pretty much game over. That isn't really safe to ride. You should replace that immediately because if you carry on riding it and it fails sort of catastrophically, like splitting apart completely, well, then it could end up in a big old crash. Wheel technology has definitely sort of incrementally improved over the years. And actually rim widths have changed quite a bit in the last 10 years. So things start to get wider and they do work well with the higher volume tires. So trail, enduro, downhill tires tend to be the wider ones, anything over about 2.35. And they work nicely with the uh, rim widths, the internal width of about 30 mil. So check out the manufacturer's websites. You often see them talking about wider rims. It does work nicely, gives you a really good strong contact on the bead as well. Cross-country tyres tend to be smaller from sort of two, uh, two inches to about 2.4. They do work well still with the thinner rim, so anything from sort of 30 mil and narrower than that. If you're running an older set of wheels, then they're more likely to be something like 25 millimetres internal. So it might not be worth a big upgrade, jump into 30 mil internal width, but if you're coming to the end of those wheels life anyway, then definitely look for that internal width. Get one that works for your tyres. That's lucky, she's running nice and true, but you might be finding that your wheels are a little bit buckled or not quite true. So there might be some side to side or up or down movement. Now, if this is the case, that a good wheel builder or bike shop will be able to fix that and bring it back nice and straight. Certainly if it's say five mil left to right on the old buckle, up and down is a lot harder to fix. Now, a bit of wibble wobble side to side or up and down is okay and can be fixed, but if it's too far gone or in conjunction with more damage, well, then you're probably gonna to have to look at replacing certainly the rim, but possibly the whole wheel as well. Servicing your wheels includes checking the bearings, making sure they're all right, because they are abused little balls of metal that take all the heat and the mud and the water and everything and just keep rolling, hopefully. Uh, on a sort of higher end set of wheels, they're easier to replace those cartridge bearings. They should just tap out and then just place some new ones in there. Uh, sometimes they can get seized and they can take a bit of hammering to get out. So in that case, you could end up damaging your hub, so be careful doing that. On cheaper sets of wheels, they sometimes run the sort of old school loose bearings. And I've seen those, if they run around in the mud for too long, they'll just score the bearing race. So in that case, if they're really bad, again, might be worth thinking about starting to upgrade those wheels, get some fresh hubs, get your bike rolling nice and fast and smooth again. 
Whilst upgrading your rims alone is definitely a possibility, upgrading your hubs alone is just probably not worth the hassle. By the time you've taken all that wheel apart to put a new hub in, the cost of the labour, probably the new spokes as well, it's probably worth just buying a whole new wheel. There you go, there's a quick video on how to identify some problems with wheels and how to fix or replace them. I did a video a little while back actually about uh, aluminium or carbon. So if you're thinking about upgrading wheels, check that out because you, you know, really look at what characteristics come from different sets of wheels. Good idea, Neil. Good idea. Yes, have you ever broken a wheel though or had to replace it even? Well, why not let us know in the comments below? But thank you very much for watching, everyone. Why not give us a little like and a subscribe, a bit of a thumbs up action if you've liked this video. But we're out of it. We'll catch you next time. See you later.